a little bit of an appearance of a, a worm, this, this pupa, that is bent. Okay, that's one of the things that's gone into that. Now we're going to need to tie in something else. We need to have a piece of red wire for ribbing. There's red wool there. So there's a bunch of... Oh good, everybody's got red wire. There is another trick that you can do while you're doing this with the red. And that is to run both a red and a silver together. And if you run both a red and a silver together, side by side, up the body of the coronament, then it gives the appearance of one, the uh, gassing off, and two, yeah. the little bit of hemoglobin that you can see if you take a pupa and bend it. If you take the pupa and bend it, you'll see hemoglobin inside it. So we'll take a piece of red anyway and we'll tie that on there. Okay. Take your floss and tie your floss down now. Now we're using a black thread and a darker floss. So remember when you're tying with floss that your thread base color will show through your floss. So you want to make sure that if you want to tie a light colored coronament, you don't use a dark thread. Okay, and just wind your floss up the body, up till you get to the top end. No big deal, just wind her up. And there it is, and tie it off. Now, what technique are you supposed to use so this floss doesn't separate into 17 different strands? It always you know. gets wider and wider. Sure. And oh, oh, that won't matter. Okay. Twist it. Twist it. You, can, just keep you, can, you can just twist it. You can twist it, you can pinch it together, you can do any number of things. It doesn't going to matter a great deal. Okay, we've wound that up. Now some people like to counterwind their wire, that is, wind the wire in the other direction. And for the purposes of this fly, it doesn't really matter, but let's counterwind it simply because not often, not always rather, will you be tying the acetate coronavirus. So we're just going to wind this up like so. So we're just going to have a bit of a red rib that goes up there like that. Of course, exactly seven times, right? Well, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Not in mine. That's a little long for that. I don't think fish can actually count. Really? So. No. What the hell are they going to school for? And that's exactly right. Okay, so we've tied that. Now we're going to need a piece of... Uh, of uh, peacock hurl. Um, take a couple of strands of peacock hurl, put them butt end to butt end, put the butt ends off, grab them together, shove them up in that little hole underneath the bead if you like, if not, doesn't matter. Pinch wrap down, tie, pinch wrap down, pinch wrap down, tie them on. Now, trick with peacock hurl. There's nothing that trout like better than peacock hurl. And there's nothing that peacock hurl likes less than trout teeth. So take your peacock hurl and wrap it a few times like this around your thread. Okay? That will make it considerably tougher. Otherwise, one fish and the fly is gone. So up we go. And then just make a decent size wing pad. And that's what we're doing here is we're just making a decent sized wing pad out of this thing. Pull some of that out of the way again and tie it off like so. Wrap it down. Get rid of the rest of that peacock curl. Okay, that's a pretty look good looking fly right as it is. Okay, now what we're going to do is just tie it off. Whip finish it. behind the bead. Okay, there's my fly. Now, you'd say that would be done. And it would be, except we have one, one more step. And for that, I brought my shot glass. And 
ta-da, a bottle of acetone. And we're going to put a little acetone in the shot glass so that we can all use that and all have a slug. <laughs> and grab a set of uh, your forceps. You take your fly like so. Clean up all this, all these loose threads you've got on it first, because otherwise you won't get a chance to. Because sometimes that floss frays a bit when you're putting it on there. Take your fly, dip it in, take it out. That's it. Let it dry. You dip the whole thing in, Bob. You can dip it all, but I try not to dip the the bead head because I don't know what the paint is. Mm -hmm. okay. And it may run. <laughs> but it's okay to do the hurl, is it? Oh yeah, it's okay to do the hurl. And there's the fly. Right there. Now what the acetone does, is because this is acetate floss, the acetone will eat the floss and turn it into a plasticky stuff, which will then essentially cover your uh, wire wraps as well. So then you end up with a fly that is very durable, has a semi-transparent kind of look through to it. Oops, and there it is. What does the acetone do to the peacock curl? Oh, nothing. It'll wash out. Well, it doesn't help to coat it too? No, it'll wash out. As soon as you drop it in the water, it'll be gone. Yeah. But it won't come off of the acetate floss. Now, you can't do that with every floss. And it's basically melted the acetone floss. It's melted the acetone floss. You have to buy acetone floss, which is this kind here. Acetate. Acetate floss, and it'll say right on it, acetate floss. So you can buy this in any number of different colors, black, red, yellow, whole bunches of colors. And uh, it makes a very durable and, uh, and uh, Except good in looking. Except Yeah. <laughs> Trout seem to love. Yes. Uh, they like deer hair, they like pheasant tail. They like peacock, they like zelon. There's a number of things that are really magic.